Tom here from Lawrence Systems, and this is a NetGate SG6100. I actually was provided this device by NetGate, so full disclosure up front on this, in June of 2021. They sent this to me so I could do a more in-depth and more long-term review. That being said, they do not get any pre-release copy of this video to critique it or change it. The opinions in this video are all my own, and for those of you that think I'm biased, yeah, you'll still comment down below and put all caps lock on and complain. That's fine. All right. Now that we've got that part out of the way, disclosures and uh, what do I think of the device is the more important thing. I do like this device, not because they sent it to me, but because I think it's a really solid product from NetGate. I've, if you follow this channel, I've got quite a few videos on both PFSense and a lot of the NetGate hardware. Provides a nice, stable, predictable platform for building out firewalls. But I do want to complain about at least one minor thing that causes a lot of questions. And it's actually aesthetics. It's the silk screening on here that labels all these ports as WAN and LAN. They are discrete ports. We'll get more detail on that later in the video. But the discrete port means they can be easily reassigned. There's no special back end. They're individualized ports that can be assigned LAN or WAN. And that includes the 10 gig ones. Despite having the self training saying WAN on them, they're easily assigned to be LAN ports or LAN and WAN ports, however you want. And the same thing with the 2.5 gig ports on the other end here. They are assignable, even though silk screened as LAN, any one individual port or all of them or any combination of them can be assigned to different network functions like LAN or WAN. So I wanted to get that out of the way and talk about these. RJ45 SFP Plus adapters. Yes, they physically fit in because this is an SFP Plus cage and it is 10 gig. Physically fitting in and working are two different things. Officially from NetGate, these are not supported. This port here, the 10 gig ports, or even the one gig SFP ports are designed for fiber connections or your DAC cable connections. They are not designed for officially being used for RJ45 10 gig connections. That's just one of those little details I wanted to make sure is up front. I know that question comes up. It's come up in some of the other devices I reviewed, like the higher end models they have. Uh, this is common for a lot of firewalls. They don't always have 10 gig support in terms of RJ45. They usually have SFP. There are some heat issues. Now, someone may comment below and you would not be wrong that if you guessed that does it work with some situations, maybe even ones I've tested. Yes, but that's different than being officially supported from NetGate. Take the time to read the fine manual that I will leave linked down below where they tell you what exactly is supported on here. Essentially, they support fiber and DAC. As I said, they specifically ask that they be tagged for Intel. Those are the ones they guarantee to work, but I've actually had some luck working with a few non-Intel DAC cables. They were labeled something else. But overall, if you get the Intel labeled cables, uh, labeled firmware that comes on the DAC, I have a whole video on DAC I'll leave below, talks a little bit more about that. But yes, they work perfectly fine in this. Next thing is the relationship I have with NetGate, just so that's very clear. I'm not a NetGate reseller. I have no offer codes or affiliate codes. And if you like to buy this product, you buy it from NetGate. I get no commission on there. Um, just an FYI on that. So now that all that's out of the way, let's dive into the details. But first, if you'd like to learn more about me and my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a share project, there's a hire us button right at the top, which includes consulting for network engineering. If you'd like to support this channel other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get your deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on this channel. Now, the first thing I want to do is take it apart because I like to see what's inside things. I know a lot of you do as well. It comes apart relatively easy. There's just these few screws that hold it in, so there's not too much to remove. I did remove the little side plate here where the USB are because it makes it a little bit easier to do this. You just tilt and it comes right out. The case itself, really simple, um, not much there, plastic. But the industrial design of this is really nice. The gaps on the sides you see here are to facilitate cooling. If you look at an angle here, you'll see where the gaps are in terms of when it's setting flush, it actually isn't flush. It has this kind of air gap right here to allow the heat to flow out and around the device. Matter of fact, around is, as I said, when you look at it from an overhead view, why it kind of has this shape right here. The heat can go here, here, and the perforations all throughout the case itself allows for that to occur. Now it does have, and this is covered under a plate when it's in the case, it's removable, so you do not have to take it apart to get to this, dual SIM slots connected to the M2. And this is one of those things that's highlighted in the NetGate video, and one of the reasons I suggest you watch it is 
just because it has some of these extra slots and these SIM slots doesn't automatically mean as of right now, August of 2021, it fully supports things like LTE. They have some future plans for this, but not everything is supported. So you can't just willy nilly plug whatever you want in here and hope it works. You have to go wait for official NetGate support to tell you what is exactly supported on here. That is discussed in that NetGate video a little bit more depth. So I do encourage you watch the NetGate video that is on their site. I'll leave a link to that as well. Now, as far as other ports, we do have USB 3 that is on the side here, along with a power and reset button. And then we'll come over to the one serviceable part inside, which is going to be the battery in there. Outside of the battery, if it's not officially supported by NetGate, just because these slots, as I said, they're not necessarily something you need to service or plug anything into. Now let's cover the ports themselves. Starting at the end here, we have the Cisco console port and it is also above a micro USB. You can use either or. So if you have the Cisco cable, that's great. If you have a micro USB, you can use that too. Pretty simple. The combo ports, these are interesting because they are automatic sensing combo ports. So these act as one physical discrete port inside a PFSense, WAN 2 does the same, and it determines whichever medium you have plugged in. So you can provide SFP 1 gig or RJ45 1 gig, and it will automatically determine which one's plugged in. It is not designed to use both of these simultaneously. This is one port here labeled as WAN, but of course can be reassigned. This one's labeled as WAN 2, but of course can be reassigned and does the same thing. In the middle is where we have the two 10 gig ports labeled WAN 3 and WAN 4. Once again, fully reassignable discrete ports and do support SFP plus 10 gig connections on here. But as I stated earlier in the video, these are not supported. So the RJ45s, although you may find some that work, you won't find official support for these. These were designed to use either fiber or a twin X DAC style cable inside of here, both passive or active DAC will work in these. Then we have the LAN, LAN one, two, three, and four. And no, these are not a switch port. These are discrete individual ports. They are two and a half gig and can be reassigned to however you like. So despite what the slow screen says, feel free to assign these in any combination of LAN, WAN, or other option ports for different network segments that you want. They are not configured at all out of the box as a switch and there's no special VLAN configuration you have to do on the back end to get these to be discrete ports that are just out of the box default discrete ports. And then we have this barrel connector on the end here. And the nice thing about these type of connectors is they screw in. So when you put the power on it like this and tighten it, it's really solid and you're not going to be able to easily pull out the power on this particular device. So you can see and I don't recommend you try this at home, but yes, you can hold the device from it. Um, this is probably not officially endorsed at all by NetGate to do this, but I'm just pointing out the fact that, yeah, I like these barrel connectors. They're really solid. Uh, they keep you from accidentally unplugging the firewall and making people really unhappy. Now let's take a look here on the NetGate website. We have the pre-order still on here, depending on when you're watching this. This is August, the end of August, 2021, but depending on where the supply chain issues are, and hopefully you're watching this in a future where supply chain issues have all been resolved and there's no longer problems, but they are shipping these devices out right now. We have the eight gig base model with 16 gigs of storage for 699 or the max, which is eight gigs and 120 gig of storage. Do you need the extra storage? Yeah, it kind of depends if you'd like to store a few PCAT files or lots of logs on the system. If not, the 16 gig may be perfectly fine for your needs. They also do have, and I do not have one here to demo, but it is in the video that we'll talk about in a second, a wall mount kit for $24.99. Uh, then they have the pricing for different support options. Then they have this video right here is the one I mentioned, which is also linked down below. Uh, it is the official video from NetGate on their product. They talk a lot of details. Uh, like I said, highly worth watching. Now I'll scroll down here and they have all the marketing and all the different advertising stuff and they do their own testing. So they do accurately tell you how fast it can route at. We're going to dive into some of the finer details of that because there's the broader overview of yes it can route at 10 gig and then there's the details of what that actually looks like and they have the hardware specifications all right here it is based on the intel atom c3358 with qat it's a four core 2.2 gigahertz processor and just like we showed all the physical ports and the onboard, if you go with the 16 gig model is the onboard uh, 16 EMC soldered onto the board, but then they have the upgrade option with the max for the 128 gig MVME. And then we have the eight gig uh, DDR4. Plenty of 
memory for a firewall. They don't need a ton of memory to work. They're not running a desktop environment or anything intensive. They're not running a browser with a bunch of tabs open. They just route traffic. Then they have the physical ports listed, the LEDs, the enclosure, the passive cooling, and the different power options that are on there. Now, one good thing I like overall about NetGate and PFSense is solid documentation, not just on how to use PFSense, but each of their physical appliances does have a nice page that breaks down features and, of course, has the ability to download it as a PDF. That's important for the reason they see here. Before we get started, we recommend downloading the PDF version in case you lose internet access. Yes, this will help you quite a bit if you are uh, diving into changing your WAN settings and you lose internet access and you want to still reference a manual. That's actually a nice feature they have on there. Uh, and of course, I'll leave a link to this. They have all the initial configurations, input outputs, lots of little details. And there's some of the things I covered right here that covers exactly how each of these work, including the support for different modules they have for the SFP ports. They also have a picture here of the NetGate 6100 wall mount, what it would look like if you wanted to wall mount this instead. So that is a kit that they offer on here uh, to wall mount it. I don't have that kit, but this is what it looks like. Pretty simple. It's something you ordered from their site. Now on to the PFSense setup itself, because I wanted to show some testing and scenarios, and of course show the interface assignments. The interface assignments out of the box, as I said, silk screened on there and matching inside of the default setup in PFSense are going to be WAN, WAN 2, WAN 3, WAN 4, and then LAN 1 through 4 as well. But you can reassign these. So I wanted to use the 10 gig in this particular demo. So we called this one WAN 3 10 gig. Normally it's just labeled WAN with the numeric 3, but we decided to name it this. And then for the LAN side, I called it was WAN 4, now LAN 10G. So it's the 10 gig LAN. Like I said, these are reassignable and give them whatever descriptions you want when you're setting these up. And the same goes for the other interfaces. These are all reassignable to however you want. They're individual discrete ports. They do not have, as the 7100, for example, had the different VLAN where they're split in the back end uh, in a certain way to a shared chip on the back. None of that, no special, just standard ports on this system. All right. Now, configuration wise, I did load Syracot on here because the question is can it route at 10 gig? Yes, as the NetGate tests show, yes, it can do really fast routing. How does that work when you have a device behind it and a device in front of it, as in something on the WAN network that's at 10 gig? And I did not get to test 10 gig at my house, so that's still labeled my home here, but I do all the 10 gig testing here at the office because we don't have a 10 gig internet connection, but we're going to simulate a 10 gig connection. And so we have a device that is able to to do 10 gig, it's plugged into the 10 gig side of this. So we have this at 10, 13, 37, 109, and we're gonna connect to a device behind the firewall connected through the WAN port, then through the LAN port, then over to this Debian virtual machine. All these are set up as virtual machines inside of uh, my network here. And you can see where I'm already getting the 10 gigs. I've been doing some testing with here. It has no problem doing 10 gig, but let's talk about the parameters that get you 10 gig. And that's this right here. So we have iperf3, just standard testing. But we've added this P10, and then the client is 10, 13, 37, 112. This particular machine is behind, we'll show the network right here, uh, 172, 1666. That puts it behind the WAN, the LAN side of the PFSense firewall. So for this testing, that's how we're doing this. But let's talk about the performance you get. So even though Sericata is running and I'm able to get the full 10 gig, so that would immediately tell people that, yes, this is great. This will solve all my 10 gig problems, but this is where the buck comes in. That is when I'm using the P10 to split the stream up, to split the flows up into a different series of flows. The way this works, and this is a rabbit hole that goes way out of scope of this particular video, is the way kernels handle routing. And when they handle it, each TCP stream has to be assembled, hits a core, and then gets sent back down. This causes some limitations based on the processor in there for single stream routing. So if we change this back down to something like this, where we take off these extra parameters, the T is just for time, but the P is for splitting the streams up, you'll find that we're getting 2.6 gigs. 
and this is just a limitation of this individual stream. Generally speaking, though, you're not getting individual streams. When you're dealing with a 10 gig connection, you're getting a whole lot of streams. Actually, you have a lot of computers usually only connected at one gig or slower because they're connected on different Wi-Fi and different link speeds behind the firewall. So even though the firewall is being fed with a 10 gig, not any one person is going to want that 10 gig pipe. Now, if they do, and if you do have a need in a data center where you want 10 gig in and 10 gig out on a single stream, you're going to have to go with a different device with a faster processor. And it contact NetGate Sales to discuss the details of your specific configuration. This is one of those buts, as I said. That being said, if we have this device, and actually let's go ahead and add the dash T60 to let this run for 60 seconds in the background right here, and we'll go to a Windows machine, which you can see is normally getting about 2.2 gigs as well because this is just Libre speed set up on a server I have here. It's able to simultaneously get this 2 gig speed while this is getting this little over 2 gig speed. Um, this is the important thing about how this works. So individually, each of these devices is able to get plenty of bandwidth to them provided that they're connected at pipe fast enough. But of course, this comes down to the stream splitting and those details. It's not as real world use case doing single stream, but for those of you that do these raw tests like this, if you're wondering what's happening, that's what's happening when you're running them. Uh, as soon as we break this up and add that dash P, capital P, and we put in 10 for 10 stream, it has no problem getting, whoop, got to fix the, there we go. Hey, look, we're back at the 10 gig connection. Matter of fact, it can handle a lot more than just 10. So let's put um, 80 streams like this. So it's dash T. Now we broke it out into even more streams and we're still able to get this across 80 streams. Now the number of streams gets exponential as you have more devices connected, but you can see here it's able to keep doing this. Matter of fact, actually we'll put it doing this and go back over to here. We can see the processor getting loaded up because we have things like Siracata inspecting traffic. So if we go over here to Siracata, and by the way, the system is still quite responsive, even though we've loaded up the processor, it's doing inspection right here. It's probably creating a few alerts because I have windows behind it. So it's saying, hey, there's all kinds of stuff going on. So yes, it's doing the inspection. Yes, it's working. Yes, the processor is getting pushed a little bit. And if we jump over to something like the system status monitoring, you can see the different tests I've been doing and uh, you can to choose it by traffic, by system. The system's still responsive while this is running in the background. We'll kick it off again just to show. So this is running. Matter of fact, actually, control C. Let's go ahead and say 600 seconds. Just keep this running while I'm doing this. Or why not also kick off a Windows test? Let them all fight for bandwidth in the background here. So this is actually going to go slower because it's now fighting for bandwidth with this, which is fighting for bandwidth. And uh, let's see how that loads up the system. Update the graphs. Update it to processor. Yep, we're starting to see a little rise in processor usage, but the system is completely responsive and completely functional while it's doing all of this. So yes, it can wrap 10 gig, but no, in a single stream, you're going to run into a few problems. I just want to cover that as a detail. Other than that, everything else is PFSense like it is. Usually, it's the same PFSense software that I've covered in many other videos, which I'll leave a whole link to a playlist down below to all kinds of different scenarios I have for setting up PFSense. Final thoughts on the device. I think it's great. I haven't had any problems with it. The testing I did at home, the testing I did here, we didn't run into any weird issues. The only complaint I really have is, as I said in the beginning, the silk screening of labeling them all WAN and LAN, which creates, to me, I don't know if it solves more questions from people wondering if they can be assigned that or it creates more. That's really probably NetGate. I just know the comments I see from people of going, well, can I reassign it? It's labeled WAN. Yes, you can. No big deal there. It's a it's a silly debate, but it's such a minor thing. It's not something that I would say, oh, don't buy a product that has silk screening that's uh, controversial. Uh, hopefully, if you're someone deploying these, you're looking well beyond the silk screening and diving into PFSense a little bit deeper. I will leave link below my playlist of all the different PFSense videos I've done to talk about a lot of different scenarios, configurations, and setups. And uh, I don't have any affiliate links I said in the beginning of the video. So if you'd like to buy one of these, reach out to NetGate. If 
you're looking for a 10 gig solution and which one is the best one that's also kind of a reach out to netgate thing they have a sales department that'll handle that uh tom tom says hi that's about my as much of an affiliate but they won't give you any discount for that because i have no discount or offer codes once again i'll leave links to everything i talked about in the videos and thanks and for a more in-depth discussion head over to my forums where you can find me or hit me up on twitter i'm pretty easy to interact with if you have questions comments concerns or just leave them below i try to read and reply to all the comments in these videos thanks and thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a sure project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there's a Join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.